the way America has handled the problem of homeless, orphaned, and poor children in our biggest cities has a long history. We tried placing children in poor houses and orphanages, but in 1853, Charles Loring Brace felt there must be a better way. He had a new idea to place needy children and new families out west instead of big institutions in the city. To do this, he used trains because they were reliable and inexpensive. These orphan trains were the origin of the foster care system today. From the time this country was settled and into the 18th century, children who were orphaned were cared for by a relative. If that was not possible, then a friend or neighbor stepped in, and the child often became an indentured servant. At this time, there were relatively few people, and thus few children, living in what became known as the colonies. So this method of caring for orphaned children worked well. But the colonies grew and soon they became a nation with a much higher population. During the Industrial Revolution of the 1800s, a problem emerged in urban city centers. With increased population came increasing numbers of children. These children were poor. Even with both parents working, it was common to not make ends meet. The solution was poor houses, where men, women, and children lived and worked. But poor houses were no place for children. There were dirty places where murderers, thieves, and prostitutes lived, with the sick and dying. So, they turned to orphanages. There had been orphanages since 1729, but not many. By 1800, there were only seven. But by 1860, there were 124. And by 1888, there were 613. 50,000 children lived in these orphanages. While the orphanages were better than the poorhouse for children, it wasn't the best solution. Orphanages were expensive, and the children were often isolated, living in what was described as a human factory. By the 1850s, it was clear that the orphanages were not the way to house the increasing number of poor children. Charles Loring Brace was a young minister from Connecticut. He traveled to New York City and saw lots of poor children in the streets. Instead of working inside a church, he decided to be a city missionary. In 1853, Brace and several other ministers formed the Children's Aid Society. One goal of the Children's Aid Society was to place children from the streets into homes in the country. Charles Loring Brace and the Children's Aid Society were, were on the cutting edge using new technology to try to solve a social problem. But the Children's Aid Society did not take babies. So, in 1869, the Sisters of Charity of St. Peter's Convent in New York City founded the New York Foundling Hospital. These two private organizations were the largest to use the orphan trains. Some of these children were true orphans with no mother or father, but many were not. At the time, people thought the best way to deal with the problem of poor children was to take them away from their parents. They believed that poor people were corrupt and vile and that the children were better off without them. This is why 50% of the orphan train riders were half orphans. They were children who had at least one parent, but the parent was too poor to support them. Because severing ties with the parents was seen as for the best, when parents brought the children to the Children's Aid Society or the New York Foundling Hospital, they had to sign away all their rights. If a child rode the orphan train, a parent almost never saw them again. I think the common thread there was that they all felt really a, a profound emptiness in their hearts. They felt a little bit like throwaway children. Uh, they had no identity to relate to. They were just really out there all alone in the world. The first orphan train rider, John Quigg, was sent to Connecticut in April 1853. Then, in the fall of 1854, 46 children from Manhattan, ages 7 to 15, were sent to Michigan. By 1860, the Ch Children's Aid Society had placed more than 5,000 children in foster homes. 
By 1884, the number was 60,000. When the program ended in 1930, 150 to 200,000 children had been placed out. Alice Ayler, an orphan train rider, says, The kids were shipped like cattle on train cars, with up to 300 on each trip. The adult agents who accompanied the children dressed them up and groomed them like livestock for a show. They taught them little poems and songs to present to their prospective owners. Unfortunately, the Children's Aid Society did not keep very good records of where the children went. When a child was chosen by a family, there was no record of it. No papers were signed. It was an oral contract that the family would clothe and feed the child in return for work on the farm. The child was to be considered part of the family. They were foster children until they were adopted. For the New York Foundling Hospital, indenture papers were signed by families that wanted to take in a child. In these ways, the first foster care system had begun. But how were the children really treated by their foster parents? We don't know. We do know through the experience and reporting of orphan train riders. Some outcomes were good, but others bad. I liked my new home. As for my parents, well, they took me to their hearts. In their eyes, I was their son. Sophia Kaminsky, orphan train rider. I was um, ad adopted by a, a fo foster mother, but she was not a kind woman. She was really, she she beat me up and she, she didn't know how to raise children. And I tell you, it, it was so bad that I, I couldn't even tell anybody in, 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 in our town how, how, how bad it was. In 1930, the orphan trains stopped running for many reasons. States passed laws that restricted or stopped the placement of children in other states. And... The orphan trains ended because society evolved. The practice of placing children out as apprentices or other laborers was falling out of favor with the rise of industrialization. Education was becoming compulsory, and people were starting to speak out against child labor. As an answer to the Great Depression, the American welfare system was started. Thus, the progressive era in child welfare began. The idea now was to treat the family as a whole instead of taking the children away. Today, there are no orphanages in the U.S. Foster care, which began in 1853 with the orphan train, has become the way we place children whose parents can no longer care for them. While previously the orphan train riders had ties to their parents severed, now the idea is to foster the child till they can be reunited with their parents. While foster care is not perfect, we have long recognized that because of expense and the way it separates children from their families, orphanages are not the answer. Even still, in 1994, Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich proposed using federal money to open orphanages instead of supporting poor women with children through welfare. President Clinton responded with these strong words. There are some people out there who argue that we should let some big new institutions take parents' place, that we should even take children away from parents as we cut them off of welfare, even if they're doing a good job as parents. Well, those people are dead wrong. So what should we do with these children? Sam Arcus, an orphan train rider, says, There is no one-size-fits-all solution. He says we should instead ask, What are the needs of this particular child? Ooh.